psychology of emotional eating, overeating and binge eating and possible forms of prevention or treatment such as positive psychology and personal development. Positive psychology, PERMA. According to research in positive psychology, people function at their best or flourish when they fulfill needs, their needs for pleasure, engagement, meaning, relationships and achievement. Different combinations of these spheres are of prime importance for different individuals. For example, feeling fulfilled in the meaning, achievement and engagement spheres will prime for some individuals, while these spheres will take final places for others. Flourishing is the opposite of languishing. My assumption and personal experience is that when one does not feel fulfilled in the spheres that are of prime personal importance for one, one may experience a chronic sense of emotional hunger for fulfillment within those er areas. Individuals found in this situation may deal with the chronic sense of hunger in different ways. Some may distract themselves by binge eating or binge drinking, while some may try to address the lack of fulfillment in those spheres by engaging in actions that, consequently, lead to their personal development. For example, if the sphere of relationships is a prime sphere for one, and one lacks fulfillment in this sphere, one might engage in emotional eating episodes in order to fill in the chronic sense of emptiness. Here are two excerpts from a beautiful study by Hernandez, Holmes and Woolley, providing support for this assumption and personal experience. The participants spoke about difficulties they experienced in distinguishing between physiological and emotional hunger. Owing to their history of utilizing food to satisfy needs other than physiological, such as desire for companionship or distraction, the participants' body began to signal hunger when physiological or emotional needs arose as well. This constant hunger interfered with participants participants' weight loss attempts and their ability to participate in more effective coping selections. Hannah discussed expressing, experiencing the hunger horrors, which she describes as a lack of satiety, no matter how much food is consumed. Hannah stated, I have a hard time feeling satisfied when I eat, even if I feel as though, okay, I've had enough food, I'm still hungry, there is still a lack of satiety and that I, I don't know if that's something that the emotional eaters have or is just peculiar to me because the hunger is indicating emotional not physical hunger it would follow that this hunger would remain because it is not truly being satisfied or Zolek Kroner described the hunger experienced by the person with disordered eating as a metaphor for the hunger that um, they had for or emotional closeness with significant others, referred to the pre in the present study, and this I'm with, here I'm referring to Hernandez Horns and Woolley's study, as emotional hunger. Supporting evidence, research from the field of addiction. Research from the field of addiction provides further support for my assumption and personal experience, that is, that when one is not feeling fulfilled in the spheres that are of prime personal importance for one, one may experience a chronic sense of emotional hunger for fulfillment within those areas, and is prone to use maladaptive behaviours in, in order to deal with this sense of chronic hunger. For example, a study found that the enrichment of environment, which can be considered the equivalent of more chances for fulfillment um, fulfilling the spheres of PERMA, reduced relapse from drug for drug addicts. Thus, our results indicate that a strong effort should be made to ensure that environmental conditions of abstinent addicts are enriched by providing different forms of stimulation, social, physical and intellectual. I have to note that this study was done on rats. Supporting evidence, research from the field of clinical psychology. Similar to the, to the scientific research findings from positive psychology, scientific research from clinical psychology has found that there are five spheres or processes that need to be developed or enriched in order for one to experience recovery from a mental illness. These spheres or processes are connectedness, hope and optimism about the future, identity, meaning in life and purpose, empowerment. 
Connectedness refers to relationships, for example, receiving peer support and being part of the community. Hope and optimism about the future refer to creating dreams and aspirations, believing in one's ability to recover from the mental illness, enhancing one's motivation and engaging in positive thinking. Identity refers to crafting or rebuilding one's identity, ideally a positive self-identity. Empowerment refers to taking personal responsibility, control over one's life and actively focusing on one's strengths. Meaning in life and purpose are self-explanatory. The study that proposed these spheres or process processes did not research people recovering from eating disorders, but my personal recovery from bulimia nervosa and non per subtype and subtype and from binge eating disorder made me believe that these spheres processes are very much applicable to recovery from bulimia nervosa and binge eating disorder too. If you experience distressing binge eating disorders disorder episodes or bulimia and Vosa episodes, please consult a specialist. I personally do not recommend cognitive behavioral therapy and medication, but please try all forms of treatment that may suit your needs and personality. Let's go into details, meaning in life and its impact on emotional eating, overeating and binge eating. Urge to eat when experiencing negative effect and emotional eating. One of the factors that has been identified to promote development and maintenance of the overall condition is emotional eating. Emotional eating means eating when feeling negative effect like boredom, anxiety, sadness, anger, loneliness and or depression. The act of emotional eating is caused by the presence of an intense impulse to eat. Compared to individuals of lower body mass index, individuals of higher BMIs have been shown to experience this strong drive to eat on a more frequent basis. Throughout this presentation, not group, um, this intense need to eat when feeling negative emotions will be referred to as urge to eat when experiencing negative effect. Urge to eat when experiencing negative effect is not the equivalent of food cravings. Urge to eat when experiencing negative effect is a component of the food cravings sensation. Food cravings are very specific. They are always directed at a particular food, drink or taste and they differ in strength from mild to extreme. So, in order to summarize this slide, basically what we're saying is that urge to eat when experiencing negative effect leads to emotional eating which in turn can lead to weight gain over time. Other factors that have been identified to promote the development and maintenance of the overweight condition are frequent overeating and binge eating episodes. Overeating refers to excessively uh, to eating excessively because food is simply available. Binge eating episodes are eating episodes that are characterized by firstly a sense of loss of control over over what and how much is being ingested and secondly consumption of an objectively large quantity of food during a two-hour period. Presence of the mentioned urge to eat when experiencing negative effect has been shown to be one of the main reasons why some people engage in recurrent overeating and binge eating. So in order to summarize this slide, we can say that urge to eat when experiencing negative effect can lead to overeating, binge eating, which in turn, overeating and binge eating can lead to weight gain over time. So, so far we have been, we have seen that the sensation of an urge to eat when experiencing negative effect can lead to emotional eating, overeating and binge eating. Why do only some people feel the urge to eat when, when experiencing these negative emotions, while others do not? In other words, what causes this urge to eat when experiencing negative effect? Four studies tried to elucidate this. Um, Toneman and Acton, Clayley and Crafty, Andrew Zatal and um, myself. The first three studies investigated the relationship between urge to eat when experiencing negative effect and basic needs, a uh, human needs satisfaction. Please note that though these three studies measured people's urge to eat when experiencing negative effect, Findings were reported as though people's actual emotional eating behavior had been measure, measured. The following figure depicts what the basic 
human needs refer to. And this is Maslow, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow's hierarchy of human needs refers to the assumption that human beings present different levels of innate needs that, and that human beings have the drive to achieve self-actualization. Self-actualization refers to an innate tendency of humans to utilize all their capacities and capabilities in order to achieve their full personal potential and become the most that they can become. According to Maslow, in an attempt to do so, people need to firstly fulfill basic levels of needs, also named deficiency needs, and those are physiological, safety and security, love and belonging, and esteem or self-esteem needs. When one of these levels of needs has been met, one naturally progresses to fulfill the following type of human needs. Thomas and Acton and clearly and Crafty found that poor self-esteem and low levels of self-actualization were the main predictors of the urge to eat when experiencing negative effect. In other words, there are those that experience more frequently an urge to eat when faced with negative effect had lower self-esteem and lower levels of self-actualization. Also, Andrews and colleagues, and clearly and Crafty, found that those that had poor self-esteem and lower levels of self-actualization were of higher BMIs. That means that there is a, a different, um, an inverse correlation between urge to eat when experiencing negative effect and self-esteem, uh, respectively self-actualization. And not only there is a predictive relationship between them. So, so far we found that poor self-esteem and low levels of self-actualization could lead to urge to eat when experiencing negative effect, which in turn can lead to emotional eating, overeating, binge eating, which in turn, over time, can lead to weight gain. Tom and Man and Acton and Clearly and Crafty explained the findings of their studies in terms of the modeling and role modeling theory, which was partly inspired from Maslow's work on basic human needs. The MRM posits that the ability of an individual to cope with the stress stressor depends on the level of basic human need satisfaction. In order to cope with the stressor, one needs to make use of self-care resources. These self-care resources can be either internal, for example self-esteem and self-actualization, or external, for example food. When one has his or her basic needs at least partly, partially um, satisfied, one starts to enhance one's internal self-care resources. Prolonged lack of sufficient basic need satisfaction depletes the existing internal self-care resources and diminishes the attempts to acquire them. So, when basic needs are not satisfied, one is more likely to use external self-care resources, such as food, in order to cope with stressors. Also, the model proposes that unmet needs represent a stressor in themselves. Therefore, when basic needs are not satisfied, one experiences the presence of an internal stressor. Imagining the individual as a glass. If part of the glass is filled in already with internal stress, it is likely that the remaining space to be filled in with external problems will be diminished. In other words, the presence of inner distress makes one less able to bear a normal dose of external stresses. As a consequence, an individual that has poor self-esteem and has achieved lower levels of self-actualization will feel higher levels of distress when encountered with life stressors compared to an individual that has higher self-esteem and has achieved high levels of self-actualization. In the light of the above, it is likely that some people may feel the urge to eat when experiencing negative effect because they have poorer self-esteem and or they have only achieved a low degree of self-actualization. Lacter et al. also provided support for the importance of self-actualization in eating behavior, revealing that, compared to a control group, 
the participants who presented no psychiatric or physical illness, bulimia and anorexia and divorce of patients considered their families to be less encouraging of personal growth. This personal growth deficit was significantly more accentuated for the bulimia and nervosa sufferers, but not for the anorexia and nervosa patients. Considering the difference in and the this, considering this difference and the fact that urge to eat when experiencing negative effect is more frequent in both types of bulimia and nervosa, that is purge and non-purge types, compared to both types of anorexia and nervosa, it is likely that lower personal growth has to play an important role in triggering urge to eat when experiencing negative effect that leads to binge eating episode. The fourth study that investigated the potential causes of the urge to eat when experiencing negative effect was mine. I looked at the importance of having a sense of meaning in life in the context of BMI and urge to eat when experiencing negative effect. Meaning in life or purpose in life represents one's objective appraisal of one's place in the world. It results from understanding what one is living for. Living a meaningful life implies identifying one's innate qualities and abilities and taking the action steps that one needs to take in order to use these aptitudes in the service of one or more people or causes. For example, one's purpose in life might be to bring up their children and give them a good education. Another person's purpose in life might be to be a suicide bomber. Purpose in life is subjective and not morals related. It is that thing that makes, makes one feel that he or she is on the right path. When one has meaning in life, one feels authentic, true to oneself, passionate, engaged, expressive, and fulfilled. Presence of meaning in life is a precursor of self-actualization. One cannot become the most that one can be unless one fulfills his or her life purpose. In other words, one needs to know one's purpose in life in order to work towards becoming self-actualized. Because the presence of meaning in life is experienced as a compulsion towards following through one's mission in life, it is likely that high sense of presence of meaning in life may facilitate a high degree of self-actualization. I conducted the above-mentioned study and gave 100 female participants aged between 20 and 52 and my scientific studies results showed that the women that reported lower sense of meaning in life presented a higher tendency to feel an urge to it when experiencing negative effect. Not only this, but the results also showed that the women that reported lower sense of meaning in life had higher BMIs. My study also confirmed what other researchers have proven that individuals of higher BMI are faced with more frequent urges to eat when experiencing negative effect. This suggests that frequently experiencing a compelling urge to eat in response to negative emotions results in more opportunities, so to say, for the individual to follow through the urge by engaging in actual eating behavior. This likely results of uh, causes repeated caloric excess and consequently may lead to unwanted fat gain or may represent an, imped an imped impediment in losing excess of body mass. So, low, self, low sense of uh, meaning in life can lead to urge to eat when experiencing negative effect. The results of my study raised one question. Why women that report lower presence of meaning in life present a higher tendency to experience an urge to eat when faced with negative emotions? The link between the pres presence of meaning in life and urge to eat when faced with negative effect could be explained in terms of the modeling and role modeling theory. As mentioned, according to the MRM, in order to cope with a stressor, one needs to make use of internal or external self-care resources. Self-esteem and self-actualization are internal self-care resources that are used when experiencing negative effect in order to cope with the demands of the situation. Individuals who report higher presence of meaning in life have higher self-esteem. This may be because presence of meaning in life implies using one's innate abilities. In doing so, one increases his or her chances of being of doing a successful performance. Successful performance is key in boosting self-esteem. 
also is mentioned because presence of meaning in life is the necessary precursor of the self-actualization in one need, and because meaning in life is experienced as a compulsion towards following through one's mission in life, high presence of meaning in life will result in higher, uh, a higher degree of self-actualization. When the individual that has low presence of meaning in life is faced with a stressor and he or she lacks internal self-care resources, his or her immediate reaction is to seek external self-care resources. That is, emotional regulation means that can provide quick and reliable relief from negative feelings. Considering that eating is one of the most strongly conditioned means of reliable mood alteration and the fact that one is the most one of the most easily accessible and socially acceptable forms of comfort and distraction, um, at least in the developed world, um, and I'm talking here about eating, one's in, um, inability to successfully cope with the demands of the circumstances by using internal self-care resources may result in longing for the comfort and escape that food offers. Also, according to the MRM, unmet needs represent a stressor in themselves. The build-up of inner stress lowers one th one's threshold for successfully coping with a normal dose of external stresses. Therefore, when the individual that has low presence of meaning in life is faced with stresses, it is likely that he or she may be more pr prone to feel higher levels of distress, despite exposure to only normal levels of distress. This may result in stronger and more frequent urges for an external fix, like eating. To sum up, basically what we have been saying is that low sense of meaning in life can lead to poor self-esteem and to low levels of actualization um, and directly to urge to eat when experiencing negative effects. Poor self-esteem and low levels of actualization directly can lead to urge to eat when experiencing negative effect too and that urge to eat when experiencing negative effect lead to emotional eating, overeating and binge eating, which in terms over time can lead to weight gain. Considering the above, it would be interesting to see if enhancement in presence of meaning in life could lead to a reduction in urge to eat when faced with negative emotions. Diminished urge to eat when experiencing negative effect may reduce the frequency of emotional eating, overeating and binge eating. Consequently, this may result in weight loss or at least deprivation of weight gain. And of course, being free of these episodes will represent a very important psychological relief and improvement in well-being. Consequently, um, as to date, there is no study that has explicitly investigated whether enhancing one's sense of meaning in life can help these results. I was planning to do this research. However, there are currently a few pieces of information that provide some support for this hypothesis. Firstly, there are a few scientific studies that provide some support for this hypothesis. A qualitative study found that some bulimia levels of female sufferers that had been experiencing two or more binge eating episodes per week for more than six months managed to diminish or eradicate completely the emotional the binge eating episodes when they realized that they can be more than their self or body centered binge eater and felt ready to become their real self. The idea that one can recover from an eating disorder when finding something more meaningful in life to focus on than one's weight and shape is supported by other studies. For example, some pregnant women were shown to recover and sustain the recovery from binge eating episodes after birth. And a public such example is Glennon Doyle, Nelson, and I've posted here a link or to a TED talk that she does where she talks about her recovery from bulimia nervosa and also alcoholism and drug abuse. Secondly, there are testimonials of other people that lost weight as a result of enhancing their sense of meaning in life. One of these people is Philip McCluskey. Philip lost a whopping 215 pounds in the course of two years, starting by enhancing his sense of purpose in, in life. He is now a sought after speaker and author, living a meaningful life through helping others lose and help with that. Look him up on Facebook, he's definitely a true inspiration. Enhancing presence and meaning in life. So, 
How does one enhance his or her sense of presence and meaning in life? Here are some ideas about, about how you could go about it. However, these are not set in stone. So definitely read around the topic. And I'll say start with positive psychology books like Selling. Write down your unique selling points in life. And these are your struggles and the steps you took to overcome them, your talents and qualities and the ways in which you love to use them, the topics about which you have in-depth knowledge and your passions. For example, if you have been through a painful divorce and are now over overweight, write the steps you took in order to overcome the difficult period of time. Write down as many ways as you can think of in which you can use your unique selling points in life on a regular basis, ideally daily, in order to help other people or causes. For example, if you have been through a painful divorce and are now over it, write down the places where you can find people that may benefit of your step-by-step -step recovery process. Then, if you feel passionate about helping these people overcome the pain of the divorce at a faster rate, without, compared to how they would recover without your help, um, using your experience and as a guide, Go ahead and contact them, share your how-to knowledge with them, make their pain easier to handle or even go away faster. Find that one thing that makes you feel madly, truly, deeply passionate about pers and pursue it. pursue it, then and go ahead and follow your mission. I would like to note here the difference between meaning in life and meaningfulness of action. Meaning in life refers to a higher purpose, while meaningfulness of actions can be found in multiple areas of your life. The same as with meaning in life is likely to occur with each of the rest of the perma spheres. That is, pleasure, engagement, relationships and uh, achievement are likely to influence one's level of self-esteem and self-actualization, which in turn can influence one's presence or absence of an urge to eat when experiencing negative effect. Therefore, focusing on enhancing your pleasure, engagement, relationships, meaning in life and achievement might have an impact on the level of urge to eat when experiencing negative effect.